Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Dow 30 chart on Netdania monthly. And I just want to point out a couple things here. First of all, you can see that we're on, some may call it a dead cat bounce. Uh, I don't really know. We're still kind of within this rounding down pattern. So uh, will it turn around and go down? Most likely. But uh, you can see it's on a furious rally. It bounced from about 15,500 to almost now almost up to 17,500, almost a 2,000 point rally. Um, that's a big move for the stock market. But if you look at the overall trend, you can see going all the way back to, as Bix Weir would say, the computer rigging. We know that a lot of the rigging started here after the 87 crash. And you can see that it looks like it was about to go into new lows and then they arrested it. Same thing happened in the 2008 financial crisis. We had uh, the Bear Stearns top in silver, which turned into a full-blown financial crisis with the bank starting to go under, Lehman, etc., Merrill Lynch, all of them going under. And we, it appeared, you can see the breakdown below the trend line there. This is the long-term trend in paper assets that we've had for the longest time ever since the computer rigging started, the money printing computer rigging. And you can see it appeared that the end of it had, had arrived in 2008. But they pulled out all the stops, they propped up all the banks, and they rigged it once again. So now it's nearly eight years later from the exact point that uh, we topped out the last time and we're starting to roll over. Um, so what is the will the pattern hold? Well, the pattern's a little bit different this time. If you remember, during the last election cycle, things started to unravel really seriously under Bush. Now, that could happen here under Obama, but right now Obama is uh, kind of escaping the blame so far. If you remember, basically through the entire Obama administration, they blamed Bush for every problem that they had. Uh, will the next administration be able to do that? Will Will Donald Trump get in there? And uh, so is it going to repeat? Maybe, but maybe not. It's March already, and we haven't really seen any type of financial crisis. If the financial crisis hits later in the cycle, then they may be able to blame the incoming administration rather than blame the administration that's going out. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Now, this bubble that we're seeing here is referenced in the SRS Rocco article that I'm going to be reading for the rest of the night here. But I want you to think about what this represents here. If you think about back before this began, uh, back in, let's say, early 1980, when the Dow was around 1,000, we'll just use that 1,000 price, and you can see that it went up to about 18,000. So this, this represents the paper wealth, this is the Dow Industrials, but it's really not industrial anymore. It's it's just all of the corporations. And is this representative of the wealth of America? Do you believe that when we hit 18,000 in 2015 on the Dow, that the country was 18 times more wealthy than it was back in the beginning of the 80s? Now. You can take out the inflation adjusted, and it's probably going to bring you down around 10,000. So take out all of the inflation, the official inflation, um, and you're probably going to get a figure of 10,000. So is the country 10 times wealthier than it was in the early 80s? I think you'd have a hard time arguing that. This is paper wealth, and eventually... I've argued for the longest time it's going to be destroyed. Now, this is the same thing that SRS Rocco argues, and we're going to follow this until we get down to the GFMS and the uh, Jeffrey Christian information on silver, because I really want to delve into that with the Silver Institute. But let's read this article from SRS Rocco. It's no secret to the precious metal community that silver is one of the most undervalued assets in the market. However, 99% of mainstream investors are still in the dark. I think that number is a lot bigger than 99. I think it's 
are still in the dark. This was done on purpose to keep the majority of individuals invested in Wall Street's greatest financial Ponzi scheme in history. You see, this is the classic pump and dump strategy. Unfortunately, it's not a lousy penny stock that Wall Street is pumping. Rather, it's the entire market. Most pump and dump stock campaigns last a day, a week, or a few months. Sadly, this one has gone on for decades, and the outcome will be disastrous for the typical American. The problem is quite simple. There are way too many paper assets floating around backed by very little physical assets, or let me put it another way. There are way too many debts in the market masquerading as assets while very few investors hold true stores of wealth. That is absolutely true. That is head on, spot on, uh, exactly what's going on. And one of the best stores of wealth in the market is silver. Yes, gold is also another excellent store of wealth, but silver will outperform gold spectacularly when the mainstream investor finally gets precious metal religion. I was inspired to write this article due to a recent announcement by one of the well-known silver analysts in the mainstream and alternative media, Jeff Christian of the CPM Group, made this statement which was reported in a recent Bloomberg article, Why Poor Man's Gold May About to Get More Investor Love. Not everyone is convinced. Quote, there's a lot of bullishness forming around silver, said Jeffrey Christian, managing director at New York-based CPM Group, a precious metals advisor. We are of mixed minds. Silver is in surplus, plain and simple. Investors will only increase their purchases if there are more if there are more worrying economic, financial, and political developments, Christian said in an email dated March 3rd. CPM Group data on supply and demand show annual surpluses from 34 million ounces to 177 million ounces, stretching back to 2006. As many of you know, Jeff Christian CPM Group publishes the Silver Yearbook. According to their figures, the global silver market has enjoyed annual surpluses since 2006. Several of my readers forwarded this statement to me to ask me what I thought of it. Here is the CPM Group's chart showing silver annual silver surpluses since 2006. And that's this chart right here. Well, there you have it. The silver market did enjoy annual surpluses since 2006. Or did it? If you were from the mainstream media, you only read the CPM Group's silver yearbook, you would have been bamboozled by the data in this chart. Why? Because Jeff Christian CPM Group cleverly omits silver investment demand from this calculation. LOL. Here is part of CPM Group's silver demand table showing how they arrive at their supposed surplus. On the top is total supply, then they subtract out photography, jewelry, and silverware, electronic and batteries, solar panels, and other uses to arrive at their surplus figure highlighted in green. They take that figure to make the annual silver surplus chart above. Then they quietly subtract official silver coin demand below it and make adjustments for changes in inventory. The figure highlighted on the bottom is the real annual net silver market balance, and you can see it's a deficit for 2013 and 2014 right there, negative 23 and negative 8. The figure highlighted on the bottom is the real annual net silver market balance. If we go by the CPM Group's figures here, they actually show a deficit for 2014 and 2015. How Mr. Christian can call this a surplus is beyond me. You see, the CPM Group's investment calculation is titled as an addenda. Why an addenda? And where is silver investment bar demand? I hate to say it, but CPM Group's supply and demand figures receive a poor grade compared to the data put out by GFMS team at Thomson Reuters, who publishes the World Silver Surveys. According to the Silver Institute news release on the Silver Interim Report, the GFMS team at Thomson Reuters published the following supply and demand table. As we can see, they do a much better bang up job with their data by also subtracting silver bar and coin demand from their total supply figures. Then first arrive at an annual physical surplus or deficit. I didn't highlight this, but it's located right below total physical demand. Once they get that figure, they adjust for any ETF or exchange inventory build, positive or negative. Lastly, they end up with a net balance, which is highlighted in yellow. And that's this line down here. 
This is the true overall surplus or deficit figure for the silver market. As we can see, the GFMS team shows annual silver deficits as far as the eye can see, okay, at least for the past decade. I took these figures and made the chart below. And this is a chart of all of those deficits. So if we are going to use real professional data, the silver market suffered a 1 billion ounce net deficit since 2004. How Mr. Christian can say the silver market is in surplus is beyond me. Of course, Jeff Christian is probably guilty of using semantics in his official statements to the press. There's probably some excellent reason, yeah, whatever. So it, this is uh, how um, they rig things. Now, I'm not going to go into the rest of the article. Basically, he argues the same thing that I argue. Once physical silver demand picks up, which it's just a ridiculously tiny tiny amount, like I said many, many times, any billionaire could crush the silver market, uh, could come in and take, and we know they can't do that because they're threatened by the Illuminati and they'd be killed and all their money would be taken away. So it's up to the little guy to, to do this. But the thing I really wanted to concentrate on here is this uh, Silver Institute number. Now, Steve San Angelo puts a lot of stock in this. I've pointed this out before, but I'm going to point it out again. I put absolutely no stock in the information that comes out of Thomson Reuters, uh, and I've dug into their past. Uh, we know these are the financial oligarchs that are putting this out. But I just wanted to show you how ridiculous uh, it is, the information that they put out. So if you notice here, this is the silver interim report. This was put out last fall. We still, if we go to the page for the Silver Institute supply and demand, you can see the current page still has this 2014 figure. But you can go to this Thomson Reuters release here of the interim. So you can see you have that 2015 with a little, I think it's an F on it, um, but it's pointing out uh, that it's a forecast because it was done in the fall, so it's subject to revision. So that makes perfect sense that it would be subject to revision because the year that the figures are coming in has not completed yet. That's something similar that we see with the government doing revisions. Um, that makes sense when you're making a forecast and all of the data hasn't come in yet. But it doesn't make sense to continually make revisions. And let me show you how bad that is. So let's just do a side by side comparison. Here is the table that is on uh, their page right now that shows you total world silver supply and demand. And let's just go and look at say, let's take a year like 2008. Uh, what do we have here for 2008? Let me put this in a new window so we can uh, switch back and forth. So for 2008 in the current one, we have mine production of 682.7. 682.7, it matches. 2009, 716.3, 716.3. 2010, 751.2 751 versus 751, it's starting to change. 2011, 755.3, 755.9. 2012, 787.5, 789.3. 2013, 835.3, 832. How do these change? How can the historical numbers change? How can there be revisions to something that was years and years and years ago? Because this is all lies. Because this isn't real. This is all just, uh, not only are the current numbers created to fit whatever scenario they're trying to get you to believe in, we don't know what any of these numbers really are. But not only do they change the current numbers that they're reporting to you, they actually revise the past. Now, it's let me show you how extreme this is. Uh, I didn't bother to take the time to do uh, to do it all the way. You can do the comparison yourself if you want to. All you have to do is go to the Wayback Machine. Now, the Wayback Machine, you can put in this page. You can see up here at the top of the Wayback Machine. We've got, we've got data for all the way back to 2012 for this page. You could probably find the same thing, or you could probably find the PDFs uh, stored on 
their site. I've done it before. But you can see here, just comparing these two years, uh, this is May of 2000, uh, May 18th of 2013. That's when that snapshot was taken. And this is March 24th of 2015. So if we look in March of 2015, they were saying that uh, the total for, let's do 2012. Mine production was 792.3, 2012, 787. Let's go back to 2008, 683.1, 683. Do you see that? So you can do the comparison. You can compare each one of these columns, net government sales. The point is, is that they're not only adjusting the the forecasted figures for this year, they're not only adjusting last year's figures, they're adjusting the entire series going back a decade or more. They're changing history. These numbers are absolutely meaningless. Uh, Thomson Reuters is just simply creating and changing history with their information. The Silver Institute in my opinion, is a criminal organization and it's run by the financial oligarchy. You can't believe anything they say. So back to the main point, uh, I do believe that physical demand will overrun the supply. That's when the people wake up and realize what's been done to them. Will it happen after the stock market crashes? Will it happen when the stock market crashes? Will it happen in a hyperinflationary blowout as the stock market sails to new highs? I don't know. I believe it will happen when enough people wake up and realize that silver is undervalued and they better get some and protect themselves before it's too late. But uh, we, we cannot rely on the data that's put out by these people. These people control everything. Uh, they're not going to give the public a heads up. They intend to steal everything. That's because they want the public to be as dependent on them as possible when they try to roll out a new system. That will give them as much uh, assent to that system as they can possibly get if the largest number of people are dependent upon it. So until that happens, they're going to be feeding us lies. Unfortunately, I think Steve St. Angelo was taking on the lies. Admittedly, he sees the lies from Mr. Jeffrey Christian, but he doesn't see the lies coming out of the Silver Institute. And we'll talk to you next time.